Okay, so in this video, I'm bringing my dad into the equation. He has graciously accepted the position as mock patient for his cervicalgia, otherwise known as neck pain. Cervicalgia can have um, many, many causes, anything from degenerative disc disease to uh, cervical radiculopathy, which involves the nerves going into the hands and arms, or both. Now, it can be acute from a traumatic injury, or it can be chronic coming from poor posture, uh, age, or a lot of other things. Today, we're gonna address the posterior portion, although it's probably best to, as discussed in other videos, to do the medial, lateral, posterior, and anterior compartments of a, of a treatment area. Some of the muscles that may be involved uh, involve the uh, splenius muscles, the capitis muscles, levator scap, mid trap, upper trap, and uh, the occipitals that go to the base of the skull that can cause things such as tension headaches. As in the other videos, I'm going to use the emollient to gently spread over the area I'm about to treat. Now, even if you have one side that is affected, the neck being what it is, you should probably treat both. If you're going for increased range of motion or analgesia, you don't just want to treat one side of the neck, you want to go for both. I'm going to take my scanner to go over the area. You can hold it a lot of different ways depending on the size of your hands. And I'm feeling for, again, that stucco, the lumpiness, if you will. So I can go long and smooth, coming from connection at upper trap all the way down to shoulder. Or I can take short, small strokes going all the way down. Now that was more focusing on upper trap. I can come down towards levator scap, which is directly affected. And you can see he lights up right around here. So when you have neck pain, it can be caused, like I said, by postural issues but it can directly affect your shoulders. If you have any kind of rounded shoulder, all of this becomes tight, but not in a sense that they're overworked because they're underworked and they're lengthened. I still want to address these, but think about it while I treat him on the other side. If they're lengthened in the back, they're probably gonna be shortened in the front. So you'd also want to address pec major, pec minor, maybe a little of the platysma and other things that would be directly involved with neck pain. You just wouldn't, again, think of it if somebody complained and treated pain right here. So this is the scanner, like we mentioned in previous videos. I can also use this tool, the multi, to come from upper trap down around the shoulder because neck pain, as I just mentioned, usually involves the shoulder region and mid back. If I wanted to pinpoint maybe uh, paraspinals or other muscles that are very, very close to the spine, I could take my tongue depressor and dig. Now this is a very passive, he's a passive recipient. I could have him lay down and take a scoop going all the way up towards occiput to loosen up the pull into extension on his neck, which can then increase the space between his vertebrae. I could have him seated and go ahead and put your head down for me and go along spine this way, getting a little bit more specific. Now, my dad has a lot going on. He does have decreased disc space and some general degeneration of the vertebrae. I can see this is a little bit uh, uncomfortable. Sometimes it can feel, if I'm talking to patients out there, like it's a little bit warm or almost burning. Please always verbalize with your clinician if it's too much. It's not supposed to be uh, anything towards unbearable necessarily, but sometimes in order to break things apart, you need to put a little pressure on them. Now the point of doing things to this area is to loosen up the muscles that are directly attached to the neck, 
but also to um, restart the healing process on a global scale to the postural muscles that involve the mid-back, the, uh, the neck, and the shoulders as an entire complex, and the force couple of the shoulder itself. So after I address this area, I would then move on to the pecs. Sometimes what's also affected by neck, neck pain, excuse me, that you wouldn't think about is the biceps muscle because of posturing. How do you feel? Good. You can see there's some redness right here and generally that means something's going on. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. I could also be a little bit more advanced and have him go up and down. So into neck flexion and then come back up. Good. And then go down. Good. Come back up. Now I could have him go into lateral flexion. So he would bring his ear to his shoulder and I could come on this side going and using upper trap. I could go into SCM, which would help with cervical rotation. So if you are a patient going in for neck pain and you're your clinician pulls out these tools, do not be afraid to ask questions. And also don't be surprised if they treat things that are a little bit away from your pain.